Hey, how's it going? This is Joe and Tell. Today, I'm going to be talking about 10 things to consider when buying speakers. Before I get into it, I want to give a shout out to our show sponsor, Worldwide Stereo. Since we're talking about speakers, take a look at the wide selection of speakers that they have on WorldwideStereo.com. They have wireless speakers and solutions for multi-room audio, floor standing speakers, bookshelf speakers, home theater speakers, subwoofers, sound bars, pretty much everything you can ask for. They have free shipping on all orders, price match guarantee, and a 60 day return or exchange policy. They also have monthly sweepstakes where a lucky winner will win an awesome prize. This month, it's the Macintosh RS200 wireless loudspeaker worth $3,000. On their website, you can see the past winners enter for your chance to win. So once again, thank you to Worldwide Stereo for sponsoring this video. Over the past two years, I've reviewed over 45 speakers. So I think I have a good idea of what to look out for when purchasing speakers. And so let's get into it. Number one, there's the right tool for the job. I know we always like to recommend, you know, some crazy system, something that we would hope that everybody would have so they can appreciate hi-fi. But the truth is, you know, there's a right tool for the job. You might need a Bluetooth speaker. You might need a, a sound bar. And as much as I hate to recommend those, sometimes it's the right thing. Number two is that there's a speaker for everyone. Don't let your hi-fi buddy convince you to buy some speaker that he loves. Maybe, maybe you have the money and he can't afford it. And you know, so he wants you to buy the speaker to live vicariously through you. No, don't let that happen because it's going to be your speaker. You have to enjoy it, right? So make sure to keep that in mind. Now you guys might have similar tastes and in that case, yeah, maybe go for it. But a lot of times you're going to have to buy what's right for you. So number three, it relates to number two in that you should know your likes and dislikes. So for me personally, I like bass extension. I like a mid range that's natural and I like a top end that can be revealing a lot of times. Sometimes now that might be at my desk if I'm using it for monitoring, but if it's in my living room, I might want a more laid back experience. So know what you like. Number four is that the room makes a huge difference. Whether you have a reflective room, whether you have a room that's very absorbent, if it's a small room, a big room, that's going to all play a role in how the speakers sound. So if you demo some speakers at a store, it might not sound the same when you get it home. So try to get some speakers into your room to get an idea how they actually sound. Play around with toe in, moving them forward, back, away from the walls and see what sounds best. It's going to make a huge difference. I do want to add that a lot of times people don't have a store near them where they can go demo stuff. I think a lot of times you just have to exercise your right as a consumer and try some speakers out, test them out. A lot of times these companies have guarantees where you can send them back if you don't like them. I mean, that's the point, right? Number five is that price matters. I know I do a lot of budget stuff and people always want me to say, and I would love to say that some $200 speakers are equal to some $20,000 speakers that I've heard. And the truth is there's a difference, right? $20,000 speakers will probably outperform the $200 ones. So that's just a reality. They're able to use better parts, better components, better drivers, all that. That doesn't mean that $20,000 speakers have to sound good. I've heard some expensive speakers that don't sound great. And I've heard some inexpensive speakers that sound way better than they should. So take into consideration your actual budget before you start shopping. Number six is that the point of diminishing returns is actually lower than you might think. I used to think that you used to have to spend 10,000, 20,000 or more in order to have a decent system. But now I'm starting to realize that you can spend 500, a thousand bucks and you can have a great system. Number seven is to consider your app. Your speakers are not gonna be on their own. You have to connect them to something and that's the amplifier. Know the sensitivity of the speakers and know how loud you're gonna wanna play them. Knowing that, Will determine how much power you're going to need from the amplifier also make sure that the amplifier can handle the ohm load that you're throwing at it so if your speakers are four ohms make sure that your amplifier can handle it most new amplifiers can but i do have an old morantz that i love but if i try to play four ohm speakers through it it's just going to shut off number eight is know the difference between different types of enclosure designs you might have a ported design a sealed design or a passive radiator. A ported design will give you more base extension. Typically they're larger enclosures and you have to be careful where you place them because they might be more sensitive if they're rear ported and you have them near a wall. Now a sealed enclosure, usually they're smaller than their ported counterparts 
and you don't have to be as careful, but they don't typically hit as low unless they're using DSP. And last is less common. It's a passive radiator design, and it's kind of the combination of a ported and a sealed in that instead of having a port, it's using what you can imagine as a driver without a magnet. And it's tuned to a certain frequency the same way a port would be. And you kind of get the benefits of both. Number nine is that looks matter. At the end of the day, speakers are not invisible. You have to look at them. Make sure that they fit your decor. Make sure it's something that you don't mind looking at, right? Make sure it's something that your significant other doesn't mind looking at. So that's the truth. At the end of the day, looks matter. And number 10 is that Hoffman's Iron Law is still king. You can have a small speaker, a speaker that can play deep, or a speaker that can play loud. You have to pick two, and the last one is chosen for you. So you can have a small speaker that can play low bass, but it's not gonna play very loud. You can have a small speaker that can play loud, but it won't have a ton of low frequency extension. Now you can have a speaker that has a lot of bass and can play loud, but it's probably gonna be large. So at the end of the day, you have to pick two, that's the reality. So that's basically it. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Another thing is shout out to my director, Ron, on the other end of this. Hold on, <laughs> I'm gonna show you a picture of how this looks. Hold up a second. Let me get my director, hold on a second. Hold on a second. So thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to do what I do here on YouTube. If you're not already a patron, make sure to check it out at patreon.com forward slash Joe Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.